Hey, Vinyl Community, it is time for another A Disease in Christian Rock. Uh, yes, so here we are. We're in the J's today. And so, um, again, just a brief explanation for those who maybe stumbled across us, and this is the first one you've seen. Um, we're looking through my vinyl collection of records that have been released that would fall into the category of the Christian Rock and Metal realm, various forms of more aggressive music, not the pop side, not the gospel side, not the you know, the lighter rock stuff or the commercial rock or the AOR or the stuff like that. Um, and it's there's kind of gray areas in there because I do pull some bands that would be considered my most to be light rock. I pull some of those in as what I consider to be on the edge of your side. So anyway, there's a lot in here. Don't be too critical on what I chose. But this is just looking at the vinyl releases of things that would fall into that category. And at times we'll talk about some of the bands that fall into the gray area of is that band really understood to be in the christian rock realm are they on the walk in the line is it members in a band that are christian or lyricist you know, there's all kinds of things so but there are quite a few bands that would fall right into that category and that's what we're looking at a lot of that stuff so let's jump right into this with the jays there's not that many jays uh believe it or not i looked at even my cds and there's only a couple cds that you know are not on vinyl so it's not like in this case there's just only been a few released most of the J's are kind of represented here. Um, I guess it's just not a band name that is used a lot, a uh, letter that's used a lot for band names. Theater of War by Jacob's Dream. Um, they were on, I think, believe, uh, Metal Blade Records. And then this was a vinyl reissue on a loan record that came out last year, 2023, which is really cool. Hopefully they'll do some of their other releases. Um, the band had quite a few releases before disbanding and the singer has went on to do quite a few other projects which we've talked about over the years of making videos but jacob's dream is kind of a, where it started kind of a u.s power metal type feel uh and so yeah really enjoyed this stuff in the early days powerful stuff and was really cool that they were on i believe i want to say they were in like that metal blade or something so it wasn't like they were marketing strictly in the christian realm all right and then i mentioned well in a, in a video earlier this week uh, I showed a new All for the King album, and I mentioned Jerusalem, uh, the singer from Jerusalem, and the new Jerusalem album, which I showed a couple, quite a few videos ago. Jerusalem is a Swedish band. They started in the uh, late 70s, and they were definitely on the lighter rock side, but they were harder rock than most, you know, Christian bands at the time. Now, I do not have volume one. That's one of the only vinyl releases I think I'm missing from them. It starts with volume two. And to me, they come in eras. The, the Jerusalem stuff comes in the eras. Volume 1 and 2, very much old school, just kind of straightforward rock and roll. Absolutely love this stuff. But it's it's pretty different um, than, you know, the, as they progress further. By the time they got into, this is the Warrior album. Now, this is the original Swedish edition, uh, Krigsman. Uh, there is an English edition once... This one was recently reissued on vinyl, and it is sung in their native language. So this album is a little bit edgier than the first two. Probably one of my absolute favorite albums. Just absolutely. The songs are just so great. I, lo I love this album. It really, really resonated with me in the early days. And then they kind of went back to a, this was more of a commercial feel. A little more heavy keyboards than previous albums. Then you had a live in the USA in His Majesty's Service, a live album where, you know, really showed that the uh, the other stuff on some of the earlier albums that seemed kind of, you know, on the lighter side actually could really be rocked out because they sound great live. Then this is like a 10-year uh, this is a 10-year compilation. And the reason I picked this up is because I believe uh, I believe there's a song, at least a song on here that um it's either there was a big thing mess up with the between this and the cd one of them didn't contain it but there's a song that, like a bonus track that wasn't on any previous album uh and i want to say it was on the vinyl which is why i tracked this down but it wasn't on the cd or something like that there was for some reason it, it got left off even though it was supposed to be on there and it's listed as being on there but um and then this is pretty much the last one we have on vinyl dancing on the head of the serpent absolutely in my opinion probably their strongest album Everything came together. Um, it's very keyboard oriented, but very heavy. So it really falls into that mid 80s. Uh, think the heavier side of a, like a Bon Jovi feel, just great stuff. Songs are very catchy. 
songs are very well done and just absolutely love it now they went on to do some other albums that the style changed a little bit and as i mentioned then they then they took a there was a hiatus for quite a few years and then just last year we got a new album from them which was bringing it back to the edgier rock sound and the version that's out there now is in their native tongue and then the english version is apparently coming i'm hoping this year and i'm hoping there'll be a vinyl edition of that all right up next jesus freak socially unacceptable jesus freaks was like in the early days on this album were, were, were really kind of a thrash type band a melodic thrash uh, they did a second album a little slightly different style still had elements of that thrash the second album i think this was a limited you know limited run vinyl edition from rocks records just a couple years ago and then the second album was being remastered and i got a cd copy of that but there was something about that that was rejected by the band as being final i don't know there was something that was wrong with it and it never got it never went any further so i'm i don't know are they still working on this are they still working on a a, a vinyl edition of the second album because they only did two albums that i know of so um not sure if that second album is still in the works it's been a couple of years since i've heard anything all right this one jet circus i uh, can't really explain the, sh the offshoot of this band without first getting into the l's Leviticus uh, in 1987 released Setting Fire to the Earth where they had a new singer and a new bass player and that only it was a very short-lived <laughs> lineup and the bass player and the singer went on to do uh, Jet Circus. Had to do with the fact that even though they're all from Sweden, one's, these two guys are from way on the other side of the town and the other ones are way over there and it, you know location made it hard to work together and so I think that was the story. But anyway, so the... Uh, as Gomer, the bass player, and Terry H., the singer, went off and did Jet Circus. And so this was the original release uh, in their country. It was later picked up and released in America with one different track. There's a track that's on this one that's not on the American version. A track on American is not on this one. Uh, my hopes are that they will eventually reissue this in Amer you know, in, on vinyl somewhere in the future. And they'll put both tracks on there because that would be really cool. There was a second... Jet Circus album recorded by this lineup that never has been released. I, I many year, a couple years ago and many decades later did receive a copy of the digital tracks, um, but uh, I don't know if that's ever going to be released. Released, it would be nice. Um, anyway, and uh, on here the band has all kinds of different styles, and it's really cool. They've even got a song that's kind of got a the way it's sung it's kind of rappy sounding and so love the song catchy song the whole album's very catchy very distorted just grungy rock and roll just hard rock and roll great stuff like i said they did a second album which was a little different but still had that edge and then as later uh 15 <laughs> 15 20 years ago 15 years ago or so he released another album but it was just mainly him and he did all the singing and everything and it doesn't sound too drastically different from this Jet Circus stuff, but, you know, it's it's not the original line up there. Anyway, all right. Um, all right, so this band, here's a band that would fall into that, at least originally early on, would fall into that line of the gray area. Um, on this album by Joshua, Joshua uh, Pariah is a guitar player. And on this album, there's no, you know, he says this was before he became a Christian or anything. So... Straight up, you know, it's Joshua. It's just him doing mainstream music. But the follow-up album, um, yeah, I don't think there was one in between. Why am I thinking of something? Anyway, Surrender is where you start seeing the lyrics come in. And now what we find with Surrender, this is kind of a pivotal album because of the members involved. you got Ken Tamplin, and he is guitars and background vocals and so um and they got uh you know a, di a different singer in here but there are some themes in here that you start kind of seeing and picking up on some of the spiritual backgrounds of it now fall out with the band um ultimately i believe let me see i think I, if i recall correctly uh, the singer leaves they bring in rob rock you've heard me talk about him quite a bit um, Rob Rock comes in, and so the band is kind of working out some stuff with this lineup with Rob Rock, but it doesn't go very far with that before the band pretty much dissolves with issues there. 
Um, I'm not sure exactly the issues. I just know that when this album, Joshua went back and remixed it and changed it up, and he got rid of all the parts by Ken Tamplin, all the background vocals, redid a bunch of stuff to get him out of the picture altogether. But three of the guys, three of the guys from Joshua went on to form Shout uh, with the fourth member. And so they went on to form that, and that, you know, is a straight up Christian hard rock band that I'm sure we'll be covering when we get the S's. So you got the members of Shout here. Now, as that is about to dissolve, you got Rob Rock coming in. So there's a little little work there with Rob and Ken together, which kind of leads to when I talked about the A's, you had Angelica and the band from Canada, and there was an issue with their singer, and um, for some reason the singer was unable to participate, and so Ken, who was producing the album, called in Rob Rock, who he had done some work with with Joshua, and Rob did all the vocals on that album. And so that was one of the first straight up main Christian albums released where Rob Rock really stepped forward with that. So, um, but anyway, so after that band, you know, kind of fell apart, they reformed and they came out with Joshua's Intense Defense with Rob Rock and a new lineup and Joshua, of course, on guitars. One of my favorite, all time favorite melodic metal albums, period. Just excellent all around. Uh, excellent. Um, I think it was pretty much only released overseas. I remember having to order a copy of this back in the day overseas. And this is an import uh, on RCA. It's an import vinyl. I believe Joshua did remaster and reissued this on CD a handful of years ago. But um, only available to his site, I believe. But yeah, it'd be great if there was a you know wider spread release of this available. But great stuff. One of my all-time favorite albums, Joshua Intense Defense with Rob Rock on vocals. And like I said, then shortly after that, he was pulled into the Angelic album. And since then, Rob Rock has become the master melodic voice on everything. Anyway, that's it for this one. And I will see you later when we get back into the K's. Rock on and rock hard.